morning guys welcome back to another video today is november the 16th it is tuesday morning at 9 35 i have already logged into work and i am just getting my day started so today i figured i will take you guys in the life of an underwriter working from home um, for those of you who don't know what an underwriter is, an underwriter is an employee that basically they assess risk to see if the company will provide coverage for it. If the company does provide coverage for the risk, then perfect. Um, we would review the application, apply the coverage, um, apply debits or credit where we see necessary as far as loss history or what the risk actually entails or based on the risk if we don't have an available market for it or we don't have a carrier um, that has an appetite for it then we would just basically i guess send it elsewhere and so um, that's kind of in a nutshell what an underwriter is as far as the insurance world i'm not really sure about like the finance, mortgage, banking world, because I've never worked in that specific industry, but I am an insurance underwriter specifically for commercial insurance, so businesses. So there are different types of underwriters in the insurance world. Um, you have your kind of regular mid office, or I guess you can say back end underwriter, someone who does a lot of their underwriting work at the desk, it's not client facing. Sorry guys, I'm a working mom working from home. And then you have your field underwriter, your underwriter who is very client facing. A lot of the time they will go into like the agent's office and they'll underwrite the risk with them. They'll go to different um, risks, so businesses. So say for instance, if you have a hotel, the field underwriter may go to the hotel um, just to kind of help underwrite that. I don't want it to dive too much into inspections because they're not technically inspectors, but you have some field underwriters that may do that. Very seldom, but mostly field underwriters are really out literally in the field um, going to the different agents, underwriting it there with them, things of that nature. So then you also have your different types of companies. So you have the carrier, the carrier is the actual company that offers the insurance, okay? And then you have what's called brokerages or MGAs. MGA is a managing general agent. And so that's what I work for. I work for a company that is an MGA. So basically I am, I guess my company would be what you would say, the middleman between the independent insurance agent and the carrier that offers the insurance. Basically, MGA is like a specialized type of insurance broker that has writing authority for the carriers. So what happens is the independent agent that we have a relationship with comes to my company and they say, hey, I need insurance for this business. Can you guys place this insurance? So I specifically work for an excess and surplus company we place harder to risk type of policies um, that have maybe a lot of lost history or the exposure or the type of work that they do is more hazardous. So we will find carriers or we work with carriers or partner with carriers that we have writing authority to write with. So for example, let me, let me just give you an example. We have an agent who um, works at XYZ agency and they come and they submit an application to me for a janitorial risk and say, hey, I need general liability for this janitorial risk. Can you get me a quote? And I will look at the application. If I need some more information, I'll ask for more information. And then I know we have this list of carriers who do offer janitorial coverage. I go down that list and say, okay, this is the company I feel that will have the best rate. I go into that company's website or quoting platform and I have authority to quote the janitorial risk. I have the authority to debit or credit the risk as I see fit based off of that company's underwriting requirements. So when I get that quote, I present it to the um, 
independent agent and say, hey, here's a quote from ABC company. They're willing to offer coverage for your janitorial risk. Let me know if you have any questions. And so the agent goes to the consumer or the customer, presents it, they like it, they buy. And that's basically what my job is, I, or my company, because I'm gonna tell you what my job is in a second. So that's what my company, we're basically the middle person between the agent and the carrier. So what I specifically do is renewals. I don't do any new business. So I basically take care of all the business that is already on the books. So I'm assigned to do two different carrier companies and I review the renewals that we have on our books with those two carriers. And so some of the things that I'm responsible for is basically reviewing the policies when it comes up for renewal to make sure they are still eligible. I review um, audits or inspections from the current term or the previous term. If you know an audit or an inspection was done to see if the risk is actually what the risk is stating that it is, or if there's anything that's different, I update the quote and then I present the renewal quote to the agent and say, hey, here's your renewal quote. If you have any questions, let me know. So typically we like to get renewal quotes out 60 days in advance from the renewal. That way it gives time for the agent if they need to, or they need us to remarket it to get a better rate. If the risk has changed significantly and we need to re, you know, review it or re-underwrite it, we can do that. And so that's specifically what I do. I like being a renewal underwriter right now because it's very um, repetitive. I know what I'm doing when I'm coming in. I'm not responsible for production or finding new business or anything of that nature. It's literally, I sit at the desk and I go through policy 60 days out and I send them out. So I pretty much can make um, my own schedule, which I really like. Um, it may be changing, well, I know it will be changing here pretty much because I am progressing into another area of my career, which I will talk about at a later date. But as of right now, I am a renewal underwriter with an MGA company. So I hope that gives you a little bit of information about underwriting. I didn't really go in too deep. Um, and about what I do. So today I think what I am going to do is um, try and get about six or seven renewals out because we are pretty much caught up. Uh, today is the 16th of November. So 60 days out will put us at January about 15th or 16th. So we're already there. I think I'm in like January 22nd now. And so I'm only going to send out about six or seven today because we don't want to send them out too, too early in advance because also we don't want them to go elsewhere. Um, if for whatever reason the rate is too high or things have changed. So, uh, I'm going to do that. And then I'm, I'm going to do some follow-ups with some renewals that I had sent out previously that are coming up for renewal like this week if i haven't received any requests to bind or to continue with the policy i'll send out updates or follow-ups you know basically saying hey here's the attached renewal it expires in a few days um can we get this bound for you things of that nature of course checking emails and all the while trying to get all this done while having two kids. So I'm sure you'll see me stopping, making breakfast, changing a diaper, something of that nature. So yeah, let's get to work. Okay, y'all, so I'm gonna take a break really quick and make breakfast for everybody. Um, it's 1020 and I have not done one policy yet. <laughs> um, I cleared my emails, so that's pretty good. So when I'm done making breakfast, I can just go straight into reviewing um, policies for renewal. So right when I got done explaining to you guys what I do and what underwriting is, 
I had to feed my youngest Palace and she's breastfeeding. So I stopped to do that. And now the three-year-old is hungry and <laughs> my husband's trying to fix the dryer and she's in the way. So let me try and get her situated really quick and then I'll come back and hopefully I can get my six to seven policies out today, but we will see how this goes. I know in a previous vlog, I talked about how the dryer stopped working and we may need to get a new dryer, but Mr. Handy Dandy Fix It over here just took it apart and it may just be like a 10 to $30 fix because I've been using it still and I've just been drying whatever I needed to dry several times because it's just not heating up. So it's pretty much being air dried but let's see what he's doing over here because he may be able to add dryer fixer to his resume hey babe what you doing over here i'm testing all the fuses and all the stuff to make this thing work and i noticed we're not getting power to the fuse that ignites the the fire ignite or the the whole fire thing which is this fuse right here i'm not getting any power to it see if i connect these it don't move no power, but here we getting plenty of power. As you can see. Oh, nice. Is that what you use at Crass? Yeah, for music. Oh, that's crazy. So he's using what he used in school to become an audio engineer to fix the dryer. What's a, what you say, a homes meter? Yeah, I know nothing about that, but prayerfully, this is a, a quick fix because you know, we got time to be buying no dryer. It's Christmas time, you know, we'd rather put that money elsewhere. So, yeah, let me finish getting this breakfast together so I can get some work done because I really need to get some work done. <laughs> I really need to get some work done, y'all. All right, guys, so I have my breakfast here just some waffles, eggs, and bacon, and I got my OJ. All right, and I'm gonna eat and try and get some work done. Hopefully I can get like maybe two done before I have to get up and do something else. So we'll see. Okay, so I just noticed that I have a meeting at 2 p.m. with a carrier. So I think I mentioned a couple vlogs ago that um, the renewal team will be taking on all the renewals now instead of just certain carriers. So they're starting training for us for um, different carriers. So someone told me to look at my calendar just to see <laughs> what I have to do today which I typically do in the morning but I try to just go straight to work so I have a meeting at 2 it's 11 15 a.m. I'm gonna try and get at least three policies done before that um hopefully I can do six or seven a day but if not I'm not too stressed about it because like I said we're on schedule for the 60 days out so anything we do above that is a plus but I'm trying to leave uh, my team in kind of a good space before you know I leave so I'll explain what that means um, pretty soon I'm just waiting for some things to be finalized and then I will let you guys know what's going on because as I mentioned earlier in this vlog my career is progressing so yeah I'm um, Popo you want to come say hi to the vlog Palace is awake now, and we got Popo, don't mind her hair. It's takedown day today, so hi, we're going to be taking down her hair. Say hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> She's been wanting to say hi to the vlog all morning. So, yeah, let me, um, we'll see what we can do, because I think I'm going to just be doing emails until this um, meeting happens. <laughs> Oh, 
compliance stage, if there is anything that has changed, if they need an additional AI added, or if maybe they had an AI but they don't need it anymore, you can still edit the policy. You'll just click unbind the edit. Click OK. And then from there, you won't, you'll no longer see that policy number. It still is going to be assigned to the transaction either way, so the policy number is just not going to change, but that's how you can tell that you're no longer in a fine status, that you are in are in a mode where you're able to edit the specific transaction. Um, but from here, you can go back, we can go to step two, let's say that they did want to remove the 2010 and the 2037 because they didn't need it anymore. I completely forgot that I had a meeting at 2 p.m. and I looked up it was 2 18 I'm like oh my goodness I have to go run to the meeting because I stopped to fix poem lunch and then I stopped to feed, Pal to feed palace and then I came back up to check my email and I saw the notice um you know the reminder and I'm like it's 2 18 so I jumped on the call y'all Ooh, missed like a good portion of it <laughs> But um, it's neither here nor there. You know, it was a training, but I don't need the training soon. So, um, yeah, I'm. You know, today has just kind of you 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 start with the plan, and then the plan sometimes or sometimes doesn't work. My plan today isn't really working. So I got about three policies out today. Um, and I have a lot of emails today. So a lot of follow up, a lot of changes to quotes. Uh, my inbox is pretty full. So I'm going to knock this inbox out and then try to maybe push out one more policy. But I will be glad when the day is over because I just need to woosa. Because today has just, I feel like just been going, going, going. And I just had that goal in mind and I feel like... I'm not going to reach it, but at the same time, I have to tell myself that I am reaching my goals because I am, I'm ahead. So it's not like I'm, I'm running behind on deadlines or anything like that. I'm just trying to set my team up to be in a good space for when I transition, okay, when I transition out, which I'm going to talk about soon. <laughs> so... <clears throat> I hope you guys kind of got a gist of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I'm most likely going to end the vlog here. If you have any questions about underwriting, about the insurance industry, how to get in, how to make your way up to underwriter, I can make a separate video about that. Just kind of my progression in the insurance world. I started in customer service on the personal lines side, and now I'm on the commercial and in underwriting um and so within a i would say within a 10 year span i have really continuously um climbed the ladder i guess you can say every two or three years really maybe three years <clears throat> i've been able to go to that next level so if you're interested in that just uh learning Maybe about, you know, how you can get your foot in the insurance industry door, um, you know, pay, um, getting this, these types of jobs, negotiating salaries, things of that nature. Just comment down below what you want to see and I will make a video specifically pertaining to that. So sorry for all the, the kid noise you've heard in the background today. The kids are on 10 today. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> so I will see you guys in another video. Thanks for watching. Do me a huge favor and like this video and subscribe and I will be back with more videos.